According to Anika Raymond, said in a press release on Friday, February 18th, the U.S. House of Representatives dealt a crushing blow to the health and well-being of millions of women in America. Now she's complaining about the 240 to 185 vote in the House-approved H.R. 1, also known as the Pence Amendment, which would prohibit Planned Parenthood from receiving federal funding for any purpose including providing basic preventative health care to women and family. Now, she goes on to say that this is a slap in the face of women in general, especially low-income women who have nowhere else to turn, according to her, to find their primary health care. Well, first, this statement clearly shows the black eugenics attitude of Planned Parenthood, which should be offensive to every black American citizen. It suggests that unless a person visits Planned Parenthood, they are not getting primary care. Facts support that over 3,000 pregnancy resource centers are fully able to help test for STDs, provide education, and help design to help those 612,000 unplanned pregnancies that Planned Parenthood is currently seeing, and that we could help them see those children as wanted children. Now, at present, according to Ms. Rahman, Planned Parenthood provides nearly 4 million tests for treatment for sexually transmitted disease infections, 800,000 breast exams, probably looking for cancer caused by abortion, more than a million pap smears, looking for the other problems that a woman may have because of that abortion, and helps prevent 612 thousand unintended pregnancies each year. Annually, three million women and men in the United States visit Planned Parenthood affiliate health center, and she says, for trusted health care services. And then she goes on to, again, say largely those that are low income. Uh, well, of course, what she's missing the point on is that these 612,000 unintended pregnancies that were stopped by birth control, which represents 35% of their overall business, according to their own internal statistics, represent that 78% will come back to Planned Parenthood for an abortion within the first year. While she is lamenting the loss of her the funding for her favorite charity, the fact is she's deceived. She goes on to say in her press release, because we at the Ms. Foundation for Women believe without question or qualification that all women are due the fundamental right to quality reproductive health, education, and services, and thus they have always been a long-term partner and supporter of Planned Parenthood nationwide. What she is missing is the fact that the right to quality reproductive health should imply safe and healthy, disease-free pregnancy, not the handing out of dangerous, faulty birth control that fails, brings about that unplanned pregnancy that 78% then face abortion. But women at the alarming rate are also these walking time bombs scarred by the sexually transmitted disease that can last their entire lifetime. Now, what when she talks about the fact that providing preventative health care to millions of women is a good thing, her statement that preventative services save lives and in the long run saves money is absolutely absurd. Prevention, i.e. contraception and abortion, doesn't save lives. It takes innocent lives. Prevention, i.e. contraception and abortion, does not save money, but it actually costs this nation significantly, financially, emotionally, and in the areas of mental and physical health. The pro-abortion crowd is deceived, and, the re and that's the reality, and we as a nation and a community of pro-life, pro-women centers can little afford to promote such deception. Subjecting women and other vulnerable communities to dangerous health care, abortion, sexually transmitted disease in the name of continued funding to Planned Parenthood, which is really nothing more than a means to sell more abortion paid for by the taxpayer, is nothing but dangerous, economically unsound, and absurd. Those of us who truly value women's lives and the health of our nation, we must do all that we can to push back the rising tide of anti-woman, anti-life rhetoric emanating from the left every day. Watch for, for the free report that's coming up next week that will deal with this growing use of deception by the other side. And remember, till we meet again, this is your friend, your advocate, Ken Freeman, reminding you to keep up the good work you're doing. You are are making a difference on the other side just can't stand it.